can't believe this. I love whales, man. <laughs> so, really? We're, my we're wife like... is like, no, you want to see another whale documentary? <laughs> Maybe we're like separated at birth or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she had us write a letter to God. Hmm. And she said, I want you guys to write this letter. And we're all just like, whatever. And so we write this letter. But we were sincere. And I wrote mm -hmm. down like... Mm -hmm. Wanted an undefeated basketball season. Mm. Uh, helped me to stop treating girls so mean, you know. Mm. And then I said something like, take the sin out of my life. Oh. And... Wow. Hello friends, this is Pastor Daniel Govaya. I'm so happy that you can join me and my friend. I have a wonderful friend that I'm going to interview today and uh, he's going to share a little bit about him, about his life, about his ministry. And I'm so excited because Pastor David Dean is not only an amazing pastor, a loving husband, a wonderful dad, but also he's an awesome friend. Thank you, David. I know you're a busy man. Yeah. And um, I am really, really grateful that you uh, have accepted this challenge to talk a little bit with me. You're welcome. <laughs> and it's a yeah, pleasure to be able to sit here, sit down with you. We've been trying to get, get this done for a yes, while. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both pretty busy, but it's, I'm glad that the day is here. And uh, we were just praying, and I know that the Lord is here too. That's the most important thing. Amen. And um, I really appreciate you. This is, I'm not just saying this for the camera. I really appreciate <laughs> you. I look up to you, uh, literally, because you're taller. But, just a uh, little bit. Just a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you, as I, as I said, uh, as, a, as a pastor, as a father, as a husband, uh, just as a guy. You know, you're, you, have, um, you have a lot of good stuff that God has given you. Mm -hmm. And I praise the Lord for that. Now, I think it would be a blessing for people watching to know where does all of those blessings come from? How did you uh, found Jesus or how did Jesus find you? How did you become a Christian, a follower of Christ? And yeah, we can start there. Yeah, no, thank you. And I just want to affirm the same thing as, you know, for you as far as, you know, your friendship, you know, and we've been known each other for a number of years and I just appreciate your integrity. Uh, just your gregarious and open, you know, extroverted nature, which I do not have. <laughs> and just really appreciate, you know, uh, how you lead and how you function and what you do and just um, your reputation. So mm -hmm. a lot of good things as well. So thank you. I send that back to you. you. Yeah. How I came to know Christ and, you know, came into the church. Uh, obviously, any story like that could be a long story, but yeah. I won't make it one. Uh, but I was born in Reno, Nevada, mm -hmm. and I grew up in a home that was kind of, you know, part secular, part sacred. It was, you know, Christian, but it was also very worldly from the perspective that we were just into the same thing every other American, you know, was into as far as, you know, what we do, what we watch, what we see, mm -hmm. but we would go to church. My father was an attorney and he wasn't really into church, uh, but my mom was definitely more spiritually, you know, yeah. driven. Yeah. And I mean, think for my father, my mom told me that he was running from a call to ministry. Mm. So it's probable that he, you know, kept that going while I was alive mm. uh, and while he was alive rather. And, you know, in that home, my mom would teach us how to pray. I remember having this big, massive Bible and when wow. there were thunderstorms and mm -hmm. stuff, we'd turn off all the lights and light candles and we'd yeah. be, you know, reading the scriptures. Uh, we'd go to church every week and, you know, bounced around from a few, you know, to a few different churches uh, here and there. But we had a spiritual conscience. Mm -hmm. There was a, mm -hmm. a godliness in the home to an extent that pervaded beyond just, you know, the day we went to church. And so I carried that. Once my father passed away when I was eight, uh, a few years later, we moved from Nevada to the Bay Area. Mm. And I remember, you know, it being a very uh, huge culture shock for me because just the environments and the atmosphere, the school system, everything was different. And so I kind of went through like this crisis of sorts. And I remember becoming somewhat suicidal by the oh, wow. seventh grade and uh, or just thinking about it, you know, mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. not understanding the meaning of life and the meaning of my life and what yeah. in the world the future had for me that was worthwhile. And so I remember at about 12 years old or so, um, I was baptized for the first time mm -hmm. and I was sitting in a church and uh, the pastor made a call for those who wanted to be baptized. And I remember, you know, sensing the voice of this Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, telling me I needed to do this and should do this, not like I was being forced. Yeah. 
And so I walked up and I was baptized, you know, at 12 and um, didn't really know what to do beyond that. Wasn't studying mm -hmm. scripture, didn't mm -hmm. really get discipled much. Mm -hmm. You're just, you just got baptized, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're a kid. And you, you were expressing a desire, though, to follow Jesus and to have yeah. God in your life. No, for sure. And so mm -hmm. I knew at least that much. Mm -hmm. But I guess looking back, wish there was more, mm -hmm. you know, to that mm -hmm. uh, at the time. And uh, then from 12 years old till about, you know, 17 or whatever, I'm just living a normal life of a kid, you know, mm -hmm. doing whatever other what other kids do, not huge extremes one way or the other, wasn't mm -hmm. into a whole lot of, you know, crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had friends who were. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember when I was actually about 14, uh, after my freshman year of high school, uh, we went on this train trip around the country. My mom, you know, wanted, she loved to travel with us and took myself and my sisters and I, uh, or myself and my sisters, we went on a trip um, around the country and we got to Philadelphia mm -hmm. and connected with an uncle that was there. And he took us to church. Mm -hmm. And the morning we were getting ready to go to church, some, his roommate, which was also a minister, uh, you know, kind of walked up to me, was looking at me strange, and he just shook my hand and walked away. Mm -hmm. And I kind of looked back feeling like God maybe was like doing something in that moment. I still really don't know what he perceived or saw, but right. later on at that church service, um, they allow people to stand up and do testimonies. I remember standing up and just, you know, the Holy Spirit just kind of like came on me and I'm just sharing about how I believe this was trip was God ordained and God wow. like blessed us and, wow. you know, to come here. And it was the first time I really sensed like this amazing uh, presence mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. and all the train trip home. I'm singing songs in the, in the, on the train just mm -hmm. to myself mm -hmm. and just had this spiritual high got home, went back to my video games, and that high just <laughs> yeah. went away. Because I didn't know to study the scripture and pray and do whatever. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't taught in right. that. So long story short, got to 17, and uh, my mom sat us down, and we would have these sporadic family worships, you know, here and there with my sisters. And none of us wanted to be there. We're all teenagers. We're just like, get us out of here as soon as possible, please. Yeah. But we yeah. respected my mom because we had to. And... Uh, she had us write a letter to God hmm. and she said, I want you guys to write this letter. And we're all just like, whatever. And so we write this letter, but we were sincere. And I wrote mm -hmm. down, like mm -hmm. wanted an undefeated basketball season, mm -hmm. uh, help me to stop shooting girls. So mean, you know, mm -hmm. and then I said something like, take the sin out of my life. Oh, and wow. tucked it away, gave it back to my mom, or maybe I held on to it, whatever. And a few months later, I'm cleaning out my, my room, which was crazy and cleaning out my closet. And I, just remember opening up my closet, looking at the floor and thinking, man, I, this is going to take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I saw this book about the, um, it was like a notebook about the book of Revelation mm -hmm. that I got when I was a kid living in Nevada. Mm -hmm. And I reached down and said, man, I haven't seen this book for years. And I reached down and grabbed it. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit just flooded the room, flooded my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he took advantage of the fact that I was cleaning my room because I just started tearing down posters that shouldn't have been up, mm -hmm. throwing away see, uh, not you know, tapes and, and music that I was like had been listening to that I think was really creating a barrier between myself and God. Right. And like the Holy Spirit started cleaning up my life, I think in answer to that letter mm -hmm. that I wrote a few months before. Amen. So throughout my senior year of high school, I was a Bible boy and I was in a mm -hmm. public school high school and just, you know, rolling hard with God and kind of step back from some of my friends. I spent the whole summer before my senior year studying the scriptures mm -hmm. on my own, mm -hmm. and just getting close to God. And so I could say that was probably the most pivotal moment of my life and when I really got close to the Lord and became a, like a true follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. understanding scripture and prayer and watching myself grow in God and sensing the transcendence and the power of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural glory of God mm. in my heart and the stripping away of parts of myself that needed to go. Um, and then, you know, from there, had a lot of hiccups, hills, valleys, yeah, peaks, uh -huh, you know, ups uh -huh. and downs or whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah. but that was some of the defining moments left with it. That For was, sure. Yeah. That, that's so awesome because, you know, one of the things that I'm finding as I'm interviewing some pastors and sh they are sharing their testimonies is mm. like some points of, you know, connection or some things in common. And one of the things that, you know, to me um, that happened in my life was I was baptized when I was 12. Mm. I wasn't, I wanted to follow Jesus, but I wasn't really there yet. You know, I wasn't having a consistent relationship with the Lord and there was a lot of factors missing. Let's right. put it that way. 
I went through suicidal thoughts too. And then I did have some almost like you're describing, almost supernatural, you know, <laughs> things that happened in my life. And, and some of them I do believe were an answer to spoken or almost unspoken prayers and also maybe a godly mother who yeah. was praying for me and my father too. So, yeah, I didn't know your dad had passed away when you were just eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was pretty young. So that was another, I mean, yeah. from a negative side might have been what it was a catalyst behind just the lack of meaning and the wandering and just you know some existential questions that i was having mm -hmm. and uh and really from a negative standpoint again just uh, very pivotal and you know life transforming yeah. in a way to lose you know my father he was a great dad mm. and so that made it doubly hard because all mm. of a sudden he's just absent and yeah. died of cancer yeah so well, i'm really sorry to hear yeah, that yeah thank you so another question is how did you go from there? So God was working in your life, and I know you still had hiccups, like we all do, right? But how did you go from there to a life in ministry as a pastor? How, how did that calling come? How did that happen? Yeah, you know, after, you know, experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, I was involved in my church and was really, you know, connected to a strong youth group. Mm -hmm. uh, we would meet. We would meet on Friday nights. We would meet that weekend. We would hang out after church, and that was a very, I guess, spiritual, you know, transformative, you know, uh, part of my of my experience. Mm -hmm. And the pastors that were pastoring the church that I was in uh, were very, I don't know, open towards getting young people involved and seeing young people preach, and so. Uh, every once in a while, we'd have what was called a youth day. Yeah. And so the youth would run everything. They'd do the music. They'd do all the, you know, praying and the nice. uh, running of the program. And they would also speak. So I remember mm -hmm. being asked to speak. And it was usually two or three of us that would share. And so the very first time, you know, I, I preached nervous as, you know, right. and read everything, yeah. you yeah. know, on, on, my, on my script. How, how old were you? I was about 17, 18. 17. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, I, I spoke, you know, more often mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. people would start to say you're going to be a pastor oh and of course i'm like no way i'm, I'm good <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> no, i have no plans whatsoever uh -huh. to be a pastor i don't feel called to that mm -hmm. and yet i still continue to to speak here and there mm -hmm. but i did get kind of drawn back into the world a little bit i got yeah. you know pulled back into a lot of the secular music and mm -hmm. movies and mm -hmm. different things that again threw this barrier up between myself and god i right. still hung on to the lord right. still kept going to church right. in some cases even still kept preaching uh, but I'd go out on Friday nights, I'd go out mm -hmm. on Saturday nights and mm -hmm. hang out with friends in San Francisco and Oakland yeah. and the clubs and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And really felt guilty about it. I still was reading the Bible, but you know, it just was not, you know, as connected as before. Yeah. So at some point I started working for, uh, for a bank and I was just working at different places and a friend of mine got me uh, hired at this, this bank that I was working at. And that was going well for a while. I was actually trying to go to school for radio TV. That was my, my dream was to do some uh, you know, work in media mm -hmm. or whatever in communication. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of taking a break from school, just working. And I remember sitting on my job or sitting at my job and it was overlooking the bay mm -hmm. uh, in, Redwood, you know, in Redwood Shores or Redwood City. And I'm just sitting there looking out the window on my break and I'm just kind of lost thinking like, I don't know what in the world I want to do with my life or what right. I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Um, and then I thought in my head, I, I said to myself, I was like, maybe, maybe Lord, I'd be a youth pastor or something mm. like that. Right. Mm. And I just feel like God secretly was like, I got you. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, now I've, now I've uh, got you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, that week my senior pastor of my church came to me and was like, you know what? I think I want to try to see if you can become the associate pastor of this church. Oh, wow. I hadn't been trained. I hadn't gone to wow, school, wow. anything. I'd just been preaching all over the place. I think I just got back from speaking in, uh, in, my, actually my, in my hometown in mm -hmm. Nevada. Mm -hmm. And I think there was an article that was produced in a, in a small magazine about it. And I think he saw that. Right. And all these young people came to Christ and wanted baptism. And so I think he saw that and was like, man, like, I want to get this guy in the ministry. Oh. And that didn't happen. I never became the associate pastor mm -hmm, of that church. Mm -hmm. But he and a few other pastors that I knew were very instrumental in um, in advocating for me to mm -hmm. get hired, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on, to do youth ministry. And so that that took place. Mm -hmm. And it was obvious that, you know, God that week affirmed it. 
Uh, he kept affirming it, but I stayed at that bank job for two more years mm -hmm. before the door was actually opened because I think God was also telling me, this is what I want for you, but your character is not ready for it. Right. You couldn't handle what I wanted to give mm -hmm. you now. And I was mm -hmm. upset because I'm like, I'm feeling the call. I don't want to mm -hmm. sit here at this bank job anymore mm -hmm. for another day mm -hmm. <laughs> when I could go out and save people and yeah. do Bible studies yeah. full time. Yeah. But the Lord's like, yeah, you, you couldn't handle it. Yeah. And so yeah. it took a little while longer, yeah, two years. And then finally that door was open to, to be in youth ministry. And then since then, you know, pastored a number of churches here and there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. here I am today. <laughs> Again, man, I'm just listening to you. And I'm just having this deja vu <laughs> because it was pretty much, there's a lot of things that are in common. You know, I remember that, again, I was also kind of, when my 17s, I was kind of one foot in the church, one foot in the world. Let's put it, let's say that yeah. that way. A lot of friends who are not, you know, uh, really godly people at all. A lot of bad music. They were into drugs as well. By God's grace, I didn't get into drugs or alcohol or even tobacco. They were all into that. Um, and and I was going to church and hanging out with them. And then, you know, God really took a hold of my heart. And I think the local pastor had a... just He, he just noticed that something was different, so he invited me to preach. Mm. And that then invited me again, then again. First at a prayer meeting, Wednesday night prayer meeting, then... Uh, Saturday morning and then Saturday morning and and all the members of the church were like you have to be a pastor you have to be mm. and that was the last thing I wanted I said right. no no eventually I was studying psychology and said no way never in my life I would be a pastor <laughs> you know but a lot of different pastors also affirmed me and uh, eventually I think I think the first time that I really wished something in those lines was as I was getting to study the gospels and I was getting to know Jesus for the first time. I was 19 at the time. And I think that was the first time that I said, wow, being a pastor is amazing. They get to do this for hours every day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I didn't know better. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So, all right. So I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, what is your greatest dream? Uh, in ministry or even in life, you know. Yeah, that's a good question. It's a it's a scary question for me only because I you know there's there's been a secret ambition that's always been in the background, uh -huh. um, hovering you know for for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides, you know, I had dreams of doing radio, TV. When I was a kid, I wanted to mm -hmm. actually be a marine biologist and live in Monterey wow. and you know study whales. And I just mm -hmm. loved. Uh, studying and drawing, you know, marine life. and I can't believe this. I love whales, man. Yeah. Hey, really? <laughs> really? We're, My we're wife like... is like, no, you want to see another whale documentary? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we're like separated at birth or yeah, something. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, but the greatest love I think that I've had uh, besides, you know, media, radio, TV, you know, marine biology, things like that, that I really am not fully pursuing at this time. And I love, you know, pastoring and I appreciate the call to ministry. And I don't think there's, that ever goes away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think you're always called to yeah. minister in some kind of way for God. Yes. But, you know, the secret ambition that's been, you know, kind of just in the background has been music and, mm. and poetry. That's mm. something I, have done on the side. I do, you know, worship lead here and there. I've got a ton of songs that I've written. And this goes back to like when I was a kid, my dad was, before he became an attorney, uh, was a traveling musician. He went to a conservatory of music in Texas. Um, and he traveled around and did jazz music and played a bunch of instruments wow. and wrote songs and things like that. So when he, when he was raising me, he mm -hmm. never ever told me that. I found out about that from my mom after he had passed away. As a matter of fact, she told a story of one time when he was, uh, you know, he was already, already had us as kids, and he she came downstairs and saw him playing the piano, and then he looked up and saw her, and he stopped, stood up, closed the piano, and walked away. I think he didn't know how to transition out of transitioned his music into a different life that he was mm -hmm. living out of mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. traveling musician lifestyle or whatever yeah. i don't know but i said all that to say that he would like give me instruments but he would never teach me how to play them so he mm -hmm. I remember he gave me a drum set he gave me this classic guitar which i still have which is all beat up and broken oh, but wow. i kept you it. Still have it i still have i have that i still That's have the amazing. strings that were you know um 
that came with it. And so he would just put these instruments around me and, you know, I had a keyboard and things like that, but just never played it. And I would take my little, like my GI Joes, my toys, and I would uh, have this big, had this big truck and I'd put them in the truck. I'd take these blocks and different toys I had for instruments and I would drive them to the living room and put them on the coffee table and then play some music and like they beat the band like playing oh, wow. <laughs> this music in the living room. Mm-hmm. So there's been a drive in me for a long time to, you know, to want to explore music and not just not just doing music or being right. on stage or whatever, right. but really using music for God's glory and Amen. to release some of the songs that I've been given and potentially even, you know, post pastoring to, you know, figure out a way to be in music full time mm-hmm. or at mm-hmm. least to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just do more of it. Yeah. And with a family of my own and kids and, you know, in a, in a, in a church to take care of, yeah. the time can be limited to do yes. that. Yes. But I've been taking like a, a class recently, like a mm-hmm. cohort that I've been involved in on worship leading and just been oh, learning nice. a lot about music and mm-hmm. some dynamics of some things that I may want to get into mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and understanding what music ministry really is. And it's yeah. not always what you yeah. see on YouTube yeah. and people just... Yeah. You know, kind of putting sometimes self in front of the Savior. Right. And sometimes even some of the songs that are written are really more glorifying to the human mm-hmm. than it is to God. Yes. So one other element to that is just writing, you know, songs and worship music that is theologically strong, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. meant for the church. Yes. That people can can use um, that may be a better bridge than some of the music that's out there. Not that I'm the greatest songwriter mm-hmm. ever, but just there's a desire in me to see some of that happen as well as to help mm-hmm. train you know, other worship leaders as I grow myself as a worship leader. Yes. Um, so if I put it all in just one package, mm-hmm. it's, it's music, it's art, it's poetry, and mm-hmm. using that in a greater, a greater way and even potentially eventually doing that, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know full-time whenever yeah. I'm done. But that's up to the Lord, yeah. trying to be surrendered and follow. Amen. Um, but that's the, that's the secret. <laughs> that's beautiful. You know, I, so I... There were different, <laughs> so I'm not very talented with playing music or writing songs. I did. I remember I wrote one song when I was younger, and I really loved it. It was just inspired by Psalm 139, mm-hmm. and a friend put some uh, music on it. Actually, I dreamt. I had a dream with about the music. I think so. I shared with him, and he kind of helped me. And we sang it at church, but that was pretty much it. Interesting. <laughs> I love to sing, but yeah. I'm not like trained or anything like that. But I love to sing, but I can't play anything. Really? I tried when I was a kid, learned guitar, and I really loved it, but I didn't pursue it. Didn't so. pursue it hard. Yeah, and you know, for me, I didn't get into... I mean, I was taking piano lessons for a while, and then you know, the guy who was giving me piano lessons wanted me to use the art or the poetry and really gospel rap mm-hmm, to like mm-hmm. rap on his wife's album yeah. that he was doing. Yeah. So then yeah. I, he got, I got away from the lessons and wish I mm-hmm. didn't. And I was doing this gospel rap stuff for a yeah. while, which yeah. was cool, but it, you know, it wasn't my vibe. Yeah. Um, but I actually had a few dreams uh, that I was playing guitar mm-hmm. and they would just keep coming up and I had no instrumental background mm-hmm. at all. I just knew mm-hmm. I loved instruments, wish I could mm-hmm. live and sleep mm-hmm. in a music mm-hmm. store, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then finally those dreams started going away only after I bought my first guitar a number mm. of years ago and started mm. learning and teaching mm. myself how to play. Mm. And so now I play a number of different instruments, not all like at a high level. Guitar is my, right. my best. Right. But, uh, you know, it, I feel like it was something that God wanted. I don't know what for. I don't mm. know what iteration, mm-hmm. you know, music's going to play in, or what music's going to play in the next iteration of my life. But uh, definitely yeah. something that's that I can't shake. Amen. Yeah. Do you remember I... I love to write poetry, though, but I didn't continue. But I mm. should. I used to write poems everywhere to everybody. And really? then when I, yeah, when I started dating Suleanne, I, I wrote a number of poems to her. Even when we started, um, when we got married, I would still write to her. Sometimes I do, but just not, I don't know if it's poetry or just different things. But uh, yeah, I love, I love to write. But I, again, I am not pursuing it. And I, I have to say that every time I hear you sing, and many times you sing with your wife, and I, I am really drawn to the Lord um, hearing you guys sing. You have beautiful voices. You have an amazing gift. Oh, thank you, man. And I, I encourage you to pursue it. And, and you know, um, if it's not full-time, just like this, because I think one of the things for me, one of the things that helps me is to have something that I'm interested in. Some outlet. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Outside of regular ministry normally ends up being 
you know, also related to God <laughs> and to ministry in some in some way, but not right. specifically towards my local church, but a little bit outside of that. Because I think we do need that in ministry. Very true. Some mm-hmm. way to keep us, you know, grounded, centered, mm-hmm. real, yeah. and attached to, yeah. you know, our own passions yeah. while we're also pursuing God's yeah. passion. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would stay here talking with you the rest of the day and tomorrow too. So. <laughs> yeah, and then we never get any work done. Yeah. But, but it would be a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, can I pray for you? Yeah, definitely. All right, let's pray. Yeah. Dear Father in heaven, I want to thank you and praise you so much for David, for his beautiful, wonderful ministry, for calling him um, to you, and for calling him to serve others. I want to thank you that you have gifted gifted him in such an amazing way. He has so many gifts, Lord, and he is using them for your glory and for the blessing of his family and the blessing of the members of his church and everybody who comes into contact with him. I want to praise you for that, Lord. I want to thank you that you bought him at the cross of Calvary with the blood of Jesus. And I want to praise you that he is working for eternity. I pray that your Holy Spirit may descend upon Maya as well, his wife, and his three gorgeous children. Please embrace their family, protect them, Lord, and fulfill the desires that you are putting in their hearts. May they continue to grow closer to you and to one another. May they continue to be a great blessing for many, a channel of blessings for many. And may we look back one day in eternity and see how good you are and how you saved us in this world and how you used us to save others. You are an awesome God and you are definitely our best friend. And we thank you for that and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Yay, man. That was good. That was great. Thank you. Awesome, man. Yeah, thank I think, you. I think I'm going to call it where we separated at birth. <laughs> that was great. <laughs>